Over the years, Blender has proven itself to be a 3D software worth using in different fields and on different levels, from beginners to industry professionals, especially following the release of Blender 2.8, which brought about its quick rise to glory. And while this success can be due to many attributes of the software, no one can deny that Cycles, its render engine, is at the forefront of this revolution, being a photorealistic render engine that can turn any project into a visual masterpiece. However, if this is the case, then how come Blender users are still using other third-party engines? Could it mean that Cycles is simply not good enough, or do other engines have things that Cycles does not have? Or are there other reasons that we don't know about? Cycles was first introduced to the world at the start of the last decade, back in 2011, with the introduction of version 2.6 as the shiny successor of Blender Internal. But this wasn't just another software release, because the powerful photorealistic capabilities that the engine held managed to capture the imagination and hearts of an entire fanbase. And we'll discover why in a minute. But it also introduced GPU-based rendering for the first time in the software. A new wave of rendering that the industry was slowly switching to because it has a lot of potential. The brilliant mind behind this timeless engine is the graphic software engineer named Brad Van Lomer who after he wasn't satisfied with the aging technology of Blender Internal decided to take matters into his own hands and started creating cycles as a side hobby. Later on, the story took an unexpected shift after it caught the interest of none other than Tom Rosendahl, and they collaborated under the aspiration of making cycles the new render engine for Blender. Fast forward to these days, cycles has grown to become a core part of Blender's identity and an engine used by thousands of users daily, especially in the freelancing and hobbyist scene, but also in productions such as Blender Open Movies, but also among professionals, and it is becoming even more popular among small VFX, animation, and design services studios. The question now is, why a big number of Blender artists are using other engines then? But before we discover that, Let's first explore why many are fans of Cycles. Before we continue, let me tell you about RenderHub. RenderHub is one of the best platforms for 3D assets out there. From high quality and fully textured 3D models to characters, cards, and everything else in between. Spanning a long list of every major category like people, animals, food, interior design, environments, and much more. So if it is art related, you can probably find it here. There are also a ton of 3D printing ready models, if you are into that field. And RenderHub is not just a storefront. It is also a perfect place if you want to sell your creations. It is super intuitive and it provides you with all the tools you need to organize, keep track of your sales, create coupons and discounts in addition to other stuff. Not to forget that RenderHub is a great learning platform and they host 3D competitions regularly. So if you want to join a thriving community, learn, sell, and participate in great challenges, you can click the link in the description down below. Now back to the video. To be honest, Cycle shines as an excellent render engine that is designed to provide physically based results out of the box with a level of artistic control that speaks volumes about what it can do. This is the case because Cycles is what we call an unbiased path tracing renderer. I know, this is a lot of fancy words, but to put it simply, it is a modern technology that was established on the Monte Carlo method of rendering, which is a collection of computational algorithms that makes 3D scenes look realistic by using the laws of physics to imitate how lights behave and look in the real world. For example, simulating how light interacts with objects to produce realistic shadows and reflections. To achieve this, Cycles relies on three key components, which can either be used separately or as a combination with each other. First up are HDRIs, 
which many of you may already be familiar with, and they can be described as 360 degree images that capture a wide range of light intensities to serve as a primary light source. And speaking of this, we can also use traditional light sources in the form of spotlights, point lights, and area lights to build manual lighting setups. The third thing is Nishida Sky System. The most exciting of the three in my book, and it is a built-in sky system that is used to play the role of a digital sun inside Blender, if you will. It is named after the original creator of the model, who developed it to accurately represent the behavior of light in the Earth's atmosphere. So essentially, Cycles is a type rendering engine that is renowned for being user-friendly and that doesn't require a lot of customization to achieve realism. It is direct, effective, and efficient. But despite that, there is a plot twist in the story. The discussion of why Blender users may choose other engines is rather a subjective topic, and each one of us has their own reasons and analysis. However, if I have to pinpoint a list of criteria, I would say specialization may play a role in this. For example, engines such as DeFi Render are designed with ArcVis in mind and can be much more beneficial for artists in that area or domain to use, based on their own judgment at least. Besides, cycles being a unidirectional path tracer can be slow at rendering and maybe it lacks customization and struggles with certain types of effects such as caustics, at least when we compare it to bias render engines like V-Ray, which is faster overall and offers more customization capabilities, or even when compared to some other unbiased alternatives. With that being said, the story of Cycles can be summarized as an engine that is indeed good enough, but still has some fierce competition, and one that made it overshadowed by others in certain areas. With the recent surge in Blender's popularity, it was only natural for it to catch the attention of many leading third-party renderers, such as Octane, RenderMan, Redshift, and D5 Render, among others. And here's the thing, Blender has a huge user base, and all of them are trying to capture as many of you guys as possible, if you are a Blender user. So it only makes sense that they try to make their render engine better than Cycles, or at least offer something different, to make it better than Cycles in certain areas. Part of why Cycles falls short compared to some other render engines is simply due to the very nature of Blender. You see, Blender is a great 3D generally software that covers many different aspects of the job, such as modeling, sculpting, animation, simulation, rendering, and much more which makes it difficult for developers to keep up with programs that focus entirely on the subject of lighting and rendering, at least in theory. To illustrate this, let's use Octane Render as an example, which is one of the best implemented render engines in Blender. And well, many things set it apart compared to Cycles, to the point where we can't cover all of them in this video alone. However, what's important to understand is Octane is an industry standard render engine that was designed with different pipelines in mind. So while the two might be able to go head in head in terms of quality to a certain extent, Octane is universally better at producing render passes. For instance, you can effortlessly render shadows and perfections, and you can do that separately to import them into a compositing software like Nuke for post-processing work. In contrast, Cycles does not match Octane's number of render passes, and it is much more tedious to produce them, where you would need to go back and forth between the different menus of the software. So basically, as an artist, consider the following. Would you rather have the ability to import passes separately to further enhance your work or not? And the choice is obvious, isn't it? Especially if you are practicing 3D professionally and you have clients. Now, I know what I'm about to say can be controversial to many, but it is worth mentioning that Cycles, I mean Cycle Shaders, don't quite reach the level of richness of their Octane counterpart. Look, this might sound a bit enigmatic, but it would require a sharp eye to notice. The quality that Cycles produces falls short compared to Octane, especially in areas like metal, glass, and shadow catching. Besides, 
Octase Universal material provides a bigger range of options. So, being a photorealistic engine, Cycles also struggles with stylized productions, which gives an advantage to render engines like RenderMan, a leading solution in the field developed by none other than Pixar Animation. RenderMan takes the lead with its stylized look toolset, which can push the boundaries beyond photorealism in projects such as cartoons, illustrations, or watercolor projects. This includes the ability to mix photorealistic and stylized in one render, which is just impressive. However, all of this shouldn't take credit away from Cycles, as it is a very capable solution for rendering inside Blender, and for many, it is the only option, as it should, because it is really great. But if you want those marginal differences in performance or improvements in certain areas, other render engines can be a great help. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.